Hello everyone, welcome to Nico's show. Today I am just really amazed to see most of the White Cross, the current White Cross, White Cross band here. Uh, I started listening to White Cross when I was about 16 on this Jesus bus going up to Inverness. Three hours there, three hours coming back, listening to the White Cross Unveiled album. And uh, Rex is one of the um, founding members of White Cross and he's uh, he's got the guitar there. And we have, we have David and we have Dorn and we have Michael. And um, these are, this is this is White Cross. So welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you. So as a musician, I've got the same bug as, as you guys. I would love to play on stage every day, three times a day if possible. Um, and then hopefully I'll get to a certain point in my life where I would be able to, to basically spend more time worshiping God, performing music. Do you have any advice for me and other musicians that would like to become more kind of full-time musicians? <clears throat> Rex, you want to go? Yeah, sure. I could say a couple of things. Uh, practice, never give up, continually strive to get better and work on your social media. For, <laughs> you know, for, part, for part-time musicians who want to want to become um, more known and eventually go full-time, you just got to work your social media and uh, work on those things and, you know, with determination and if it's in God's plan for your life, it'll happen. Yes. Never give up. So are you, are you guys all full-time musicians? And I know the management guy, yeah, Dornairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some of us were just not clever enough to get real jobs so you know, we just we play the music because that's all there is for for guys like us, right, Dave? That's right. No plan B. <laughs> Born to sing. No plan B. Yeah, we're the A team. There is no plan B. Right. <laughs> so, Michael, I, um, I've heard that the drummer is the most important musician in the band. Would you agree? Absolutely. Wait, did you say drummer and musician in the same sentence? <laughs> yeah, I'm confused. The drummer and the singer hang out with the musicians <laughs> after the gig. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> no, I, Nikos, I, I, I teach drum lessons as well. And I always tell the students that I'm like, the drummer really, you know, there's a point where it's like, if you don't have a solid drummer the band's gonna suffer if you've got a great singer and a great guitar player and a weak drummer it's not gonna go so good yeah so but true. if you've got a great drummer and an okay yeah. singer okay guitar player it's not gonna be too bad uh nick nick was it uh who's the drummer from pink floyd is it nick mason yeah nick mason yeah nick mason said that a band consists of a drummer and a bass player plus various assorted novelty acts that's so true <laughs> <laughs> that is so true <clears throat> the white cross, well, white cross has the benefit of having one of the best drummers there is amen. He, he is amazing I, I agree and mike michael is definitely i was just thinking about this last night we We've been playing music together for 30 some years, and he's the engine that makes it go. Mm. Thank you, I was, guys. I checked out your YouTube channel, Michael. Um, do you compose and write that music yourself? Not, not totally, no. I mean, just <laughs> lyric, lyrics and some melodies, but mostly that was uh, Matt Bissonette. I saw a video. It was quite. It was like a military theme. Yes, the latest one. Uh, yeah, my dad. He was Air Force, and um, the gentleman that like was funding that whole project. He wanted like a really, you know, a, another song, kind of like that Lee Greenwood had written. You know, and this was in 2021 when everything you know was going crazy he's like we need another patriotic song and so yeah that, that came together and you know, i'm very i'm proud of it for sure 
I'll link it on the, the video description. Beautiful song. Oh, thank you. So, Rex, I see you're practicing there. I once saw this, I was in Vienna, and this guy turned up at this house group meeting. It's like a midweek church meeting. And he had like this leather jacket on, and he was carrying uh, some strap, in you know, a black strap. And he just walked in and just, so like, I, I got talking to him, like, and says, why do you carry around a, a guitar with you? You know, you must be carrying this with him all the time. He says, well, there's always another scale you can practice, you know? Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, there's always more. <laughs> there's always you got to keep the fingers loose yeah what were you just practicing there rex uh i'm not really sure i guess it was just like some notes yes yes yes, yes. here we go i was reading some things today about guitar playing and i was seeing how much guitar practice you need to be to become a master and it says between three to six hours a day does that make sense yeah that's probably that's probably good and that's why i never will be a master because i've never practiced <laughs> more than a couple hours a day ever at any time ever i mean it if you if you play guitar, if you if you play guitar for thirty minutes a day, you'll end up being like really really good, right, Mike? I mean the whole the whole thing is just to be consistent, right? Over time, not not to get all excited and to do it like all day on Thursday and then oh yeah, I didn't do anything for like two months. I was just living off of the high of that one day because it was so much fun that one day, and I just you know oh I keep thinking I'll get back to it, but. But you know, if you do like a little, a little bit every day, it goes a long ways. Mm. And what about what about playing playing the drums, Michael? Do you have um, opportunity to play the drums every day? Because I know that's a big challenge with drum players to get really good. They have to be able to practice a lot, which is very difficult. It is. I mean, um, like when I was younger, oh my gosh, it was like four to five hours a day you know and now it is it's much harder just because of the sound issue um but i always have like a drum pad and um and i get to you know when i'm teaching you know i'm kind of constantly on the drums and although i'm not um practicing i guess like i would like to but there are there's some students that will push me and you know so i'm, I'm deaf i'm on the kit a, you know, a lot as a teaching, but yeah, personal practice, like Rex is saying, like, and 30 minutes a day, just focused practice on things that are difficult. Yeah, you'll see a huge improvement. Have you tried any of those Roland V drums with the meshes? Yes, I'm actually, I'm, I'm thinking about getting one of those. I mean, I would never play something like that live, but yeah, to, to practice at home, be something. Yeah, my friend was testing it out on uh, guitar, guitar in Glasgow. I wonder if it's the same feel as the real drums, because I know that you need to pr also practice the way the stick hits the the contact bit, you know. And so that's like, but then that's, yeah. that's a big that's a big solution for for I mean, like neighbors, you know. Yeah, I mean the really the really expensive Roland uh, electronic drums are are pretty good, but then you're looking at like you know seven grand. Mm -hmm. so, so David, how, how, so David, how often do you practice singing? Uh, my my thing is five days a week, and then I rest my voice for two days. So wow. I just started again yesterday after a five day run, and I'll be doing the white cross set for another four days and then I'll take two days off and on and on that way I'm prepared and strong for any, any tour that we get, I'll be able to, to handle it. Cause these white cross songs are uh, no walk in the park. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be on top of your game to perform them. And I'm sure that's true with the drums, with the guitar, with the bass and definitely for the vocals. So it's, it's really elite material. And I have to sing five days a week to keep my voice strong for this band because I love these guys. We love him, man. 
Yeah, and you know, I've wor I've worked with a lot of singers who who say, "Oh yes, I'm going to practice. I can't wait to practice. I can't wait to work on my voice." And Dave is the <clears> only <throat> guy I actually know who actually does it. And you know, I'll just call him up. He's, "Oh, I just came in from uh, the studio. He was out in his studio uh, rehearsing." So he he does it, and and like he says, you know, you have to you have to stay on it so that your voice stays loose and limber and able to hit hit the high notes it's very much you know, guitar and drumming is the same thing you know if i stop practicing guitar for a couple of days i really feel it a lot and it takes like a few days even just to get back to where you were so yeah can't really afford to slow down too much yeah for sure yeah i think everything that elite level in terms of physicality um it's like weightlifting or you or or like just like doing doing like calisthenics. Like I find that uh, I like to do like you know a bit of calisthenics. But even if you take like five days off, your muscles become just feel so weak, and yeah. it's just uh, a constant thing. Yeah, same thing. Because we're all working our muscles. Michael's using every muscle in his body. Rex is using his fingers. <clears throat> I'm using my vocal box. I, I'm using the smallest muscle, but <laughs> they're all still muscles, you know. So the, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta work it. Yeah. If you don't use it, you will lose it. That's for what sure. about Dorn? What about Dorn? Which muscles are you using every day? <laughs> well, the uh, one that gets as much ice cream into me as possible. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's doing the curls. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, Don, what's it like managing a band in the age of the internet? It's uh, actually nothing like it was back in the eighties. I, I was, uh, I was thinking back when Rex first approached me about doing this, um, that I had it all down, and I thought the internet would just be a big plus and make it even easier but this is not always the case and things have really changed out there from what they were back when I started doing this. So it's, uh, it's actually an exercise every day trying to make headway and make contacts and, um, bring things back, try to anyway, with, uh, a lot of more, a lot more technology available than there was back then. Um, I think my computer was so slow, I'd turn it on and it would take an hour or so to boot up. Now, today, everything is right at your fingertips, but it doesn't always make it easier to make contact and to make the, I don't know, make the uh, contacts that you'd really like to make. But I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, it's a day-to-day -day challenge trying to keep things going and make things happen. I mean... I am I'm excited about what's going on with the band right now with the new project coming out uh the shows that they've been doing the ones that have been scheduled just amazing uh it's an awesome opportunity and it seems to really be coming to uh, fruition so you know there are people out there that are doing some things right and it, it's starting to happen so other than that I don't know what to say <laughs> I'm a man. I'm a man of few words, unless I'm talking about ice cream. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So one one of the things that I love about White Cross is that they have these massive guitar solos in just about every song. That's that's and each guitar solo was like different. So I, I like some of the Van Halen songs. But sometimes the the you know the the, the amazing late. Um, Eddie Van Halen, his, his, his guitar solos are, are sometimes quite short, but with Rex, you get like two or three minute long solos in every song. It's like, how do you, how do you come up with with such original solos that that stand out? Well, I've I've been going to therapy, <laughs> and and my therapist says that you know starting starting this year, I have to like cut thirty seconds from each solo, <laughs> and. And, uh, you know, the band has stood by me during my recovery and uh, I'll try to, you know, they're trying to 
reintegrate me into society so I can be a normal musician. That'll never happen. But uh, it, it's, I don't know if it'll ever happen yet. <laughs> so how much when you're on stage is the solo remembered versus like improvisation? I guess a mixture. Uh, for a serious answer to that question, it's like, well, there's, there's, if it's a really, if it's a really good solo, if it came out really well on the record, then I try to recall, uh, some of the high points. Uh, but I, you do see bands and artists where like when there's a guitar solo, like I, I saw a fantastic group called King and Country and maybe out of a two hour concert, there was maybe like two guitar solos. Uh, one of them was like for four measures and the other was for six measures. So they don't really feature uh, the guitar solo, but you know, the, the solos that the guy played were, were scripted out note for note. So there's, there's, a, it's a featured part, but there's, there is no deviation whatsoever. Every night it's exactly the same. Uh, our music is, is, uh, comes from an earlier era. We come from, uh, you know, Van Halen, in a sense, uh, since you brought them up, they were kind of a jam band. Like, they could just feel the vibe in the moment, and they could go. And uh, uh, they have read some things uh, on the internet about um, how Eddie and Alex, the two brothers, would, would uh, they were intuitively connected. Um, and I, I think that uh, Mike and I have that to a degree um where we feed off of each other and um and i think i think dave is getting into that too and uh so i i think we feed off of each other uh it's where we have there's enough freedom within the form of the song that you can improvise something um and and we don't look at it as oh you deviated from the script we we don't look at it that way we look at it as wow whatever you just did really enhanced um the presentation of the song so so you'll play the song a hundred times uh but no version of the, every version of the song will not be there's no identical two versions uh there's always like uh deviation like some small sometimes a little bit sometimes more sometimes a lot but um so you could you could play the song 10 times a row in a row and Dave will do something different uh, on a vocal thing at the end, just cause he'll feel it. So we have the freedom to do that. Uh, and the bands uh, from the era that we grew up with, groups like Cream and Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple and these kinds of bands. Um, you know, so they have the form of the song, but there was a lot of room for creativity and individual expression and, and uh, uh, so there's a give and take, almost like a jazz musician approach, um, and that's that's great. And then and then what we see today with the computerized, um, yeah, you see groups where the where the light show is timed uh, to the music, and there's like nearly impossible light cues, but it, it's possible because everything is is running off of sequence on a computer. And that's great. And those are those shows are really fun and they're really impressive. And it's a, just a different kind of experience. So uh, I don't think there's any one right way or wrong way. But just in our group, we're still kind of a holdover from that uh, from that sort of jazz musician mentality where we can we can play the song and then we can improvise within the structure of the song a little bit. So that's my answer. Anybody else want to kick into that? I think you covered it there. That was well said, Rex. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, can I, can I I say, let me say blast. something. Let me say something from a different point of view. Um, when I would take bands into the studio, one of the biggest thorns inside was the lead guitarist who couldn't play the same lead twice mm -hmm. because their minds were so actively searching for something else that every time they do a take, something would change. And so, therefore, we had a lot of trouble with it. And when you were on a, we were on a real tight budget back then, and it would just take time and take time and take time. I remember spending four to five hours trying to get a lead solo down for a recording project, and I could just see the the dollar signs going ching 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 ching. <laughs> ching, ching. But uh, at the same time, at the same time, I think that's one of the 
beautiful things about Rex and his solos. They're, they're so touching. And every time he plays one, to me, it hits even harder or, or more in the heart, in the gut or whatever, because of the little subtle changes he makes, it makes it something new. Um, you, you're not expecting it. And then something really great comes flying out of that guitar. And uh, that's uh, I, so I have two different points of view, but I love the I love the creativity. I like what Rex is saying about the the jazz musician aspect of it. I've witnessed that a whole lot. And uh, it's it's a good thing. I'm not putting it down. It's a good yeah. thing. And, and Doran, you're you're so right about that because I remember, uh, uh, like when we were doing the In the Kingdom album, there was times, um, most of the, for the most part, I would play through, but there was times when I would just get really stuck. And there was there was a part in the song No Second Chances, right during the lead break. It took me an hour and a half of studio time, and the clock is running, like you said, and the dollars are going out the door. Yeah, um, we're spending the money, but it's like, well, I'm stuck in this one spot, and it took an hour and a half to get it right. And when it finally did, oh, what a relief! You know, great. And when and when, sure. when you get the final results, then it's like, wow, that was worth it. That was worth yeah, it. Uh, yeah, yeah, because because you just don't want to let um, a, you don't want to let a record. You know, once a recording goes out. Uh, it's forever, right? It's digital. It's mm -hmm. on the internet. I mean, it's out there in the ether. And you figure, well, 400 years from now, uh, somebody's going to go, oh, yeah. And they used to have this thing called the internet. It's hilarious. You couldn't <laughs> even do it in like 3D hologram like we do now. You know, such so ancient yeah. Neanderthal technology they had 400 years ago. But yeah. I found this really cool band and they had this song called No Second Chances. And check out this thing. They had these thing called electric guitars. And this is how this thing went. And it was it was actually it was pretty cool, you know. So yeah. so you think uh, you know, once you put it out there, it's forever. Yeah. So you don't want to let something go unless it's unless you know that you you gave it all and it's it's the best that you can get. Yep. Yep. So I, I'm doing a lot of improvisation, Rex, and um, so if I take the A minor scale. So um, I get to the point where I'm not like, I'm trying to imagine what's going to come up, say five notes ahead and get to the point where I can play that. Does that develop to the point where you can put down on the guitar exactly what you want to come down? Or you still have to like, just a bit um, of like randomness. Well, what I'd say, and Mike and Dave, you can both comment on this too, is what I like to say is I, I truly believe that if you if you can hear it, you can play it. Not just like a vague idea, but if you can hear specific pitches in your head, um, then you'll find it, you'll find the notes. On the guitar and sometimes you'll hear a melody and you go oh i don't know where this is but you'll teach it to yourself because you're looking for these specific notes and, and then you'll come to a, a realization oh this is like a different fingering maybe you'll have a familiar scale but you'll find a new fingering for it or maybe you'll discover like a new scale um but the scales are all more alike there's only like there's only a half a dozen different scales anyways. Everything else is just a variation. But if you can hear a sound in your head, you can play it. And if, if you if you just sort of have this vague idea of what it is, if it's not specific, then you'll never be able to play it. Um, you so that, that just goes to everything, I think. Mike, what do, what do you think about that? I mean, yeah. I with drums, you know, a little bit different, but I mean, I, I totally agree. Like if you can hear something, you know, you're going to want to like try and execute that or, you know, find a way might not always work, but I mean, I'm, I, I think that's what makes you like a really, your individuality as a musician, you know, stuff as far as like for me, just influenced by, you know, a bunch of different drummers and then trying to 
um, you know, come up with something that's my own. Yeah, I mean, isn't that how you come up with like your own sounds? Is when right. you is when you wake up and you go, oh, I've got this idea for this one song. Yes. I could do this followed by this, and yep. then part of you goes, well, that doesn't sound like you know, so and so would do it. And in fact, it doesn't sound like anybody else. And then does that scare you or does that get you excited? Oh, this is like, this is going to be like my own thing. Yeah. So in, in Ukraine, it's quite a unique situation. I don't speak the language, but I, I play the bass and the electric guitar sometimes in the same worship service. And I, and I choose them based on what I feel like playing. But I play the lead guitar sometimes when it's quite an emotional song. And it's quite a, a responsibility to play some because they're singing about like ukraine and all this war and all this stuff and trying to make some music that's people will appreciate but i just keep it really simple i maybe play one or two notes in a beat you know and uh i love it i just love it. i can't get enough of it really yeah you've been bitten by the music bug welcome yeah. to the family <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get some secret licks from the new album Rex here oh yeah sure let's see let me let me see if I can do this thing can you hear it yep can you hear it yep. yeah <laughs> so uh, uh... That's like the first song. I noticed that pinch harmonic there. I'm still trying to figure out how that works. Um, but I love the pinch harmonics. Well, you just go like this. Just go like that, and it's all good. The hard thing about the pinch harmonic is that every fret has a different position where you've got to hit the pinch harmonic, which is like... 12 times the work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so a lot of mathematics and physics involved in actually, if you never tried to work out what pinch harmonic is from the listeners. Or, or you can just play your guitar for an hour every day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> keep practicing it and then you'll get it. <laughs> yeah. Like we were talking about earlier. So, in terms of White Cross, um, you guys live a, a Christian lifestyle, so that you would think that you have a bit better health habits like than, for example, some of these other secular bands. Um, like it was, It's so sad that we, we lost that Eddie Van Halen, but he's, apparently when he was 12 years old, his dad taught him to like drink alcohol to calm his, calm his nerves. You know, and, and that just, you just see also what the consequences of that are, unfortunately. So let's just let's just talk about uh, Christianity in the in the larger sense for a minute. Let's let's clear up a misconception. When when you uh, decide to become a Christ follower, that has nothing to do whatsoever with uh, your lifestyle or your habits. If you have healthy habits or a lot of bad habits. If you consider yourself to be the worst of all sinners, whatever, um, Jesus says, come to me as you are. And it's not your job to, well, I have to clean myself up so that I'm ready to become Christian. Yeah, that's not how it works, um, because if that were the case, no one could be a Christian because there is not any of us that could possibly clean ourselves up, quote unquote, uh, to become good enough to, to be a, a holy uh, specimen of the church of Christ. You know, that's not what it's all about. What it's about is that even while we are in our uh, sinful condition and everybody, everybody in the world has a different concept of sin, but you know what it is for you. Uh, the thing that you're not supposed to do that you keep doing or the thing that you should do that you haven't had the courage to do yet. Um, so 
whatever those things are that are that are weighing you down in your conscience, uh, even while you're doing those things, uh, Jesus came and died on the cross and lived that holy, sinless life and took your sin on the cross already. It's already done. So, so the only thing you have to do is is believe in your heart that uh, God raised him from the dead and confess him with out loud in public that he is your savior and that's it and then you will be saved it's it's um you know all religion in the world is man trying to do things to please god like if i do these following steps then i will attain to the required level of holiness that's required christianity is the only religion in the world where God reaches out to us and says, everything that's needed is done for you already. It's a free gift. Uh, receive the gift of Christ and come into my church and be part of my family and live with me in eternal glory and bliss and eternal pleasure and joy and everything else um, forever. And uh, <laughs> so that's, that's what Christianity is. As far as when you see Christians, you know, little by little, um, once you've made that decision to follow Christ, you know, when you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will, will as you allow yourself uh, to be open to the Holy Spirit, he'll make subtle changes. You know, you will, you will find yourself wanting to be, to live your life in a way that is more pleasing and more honorable uh, to God. And you, as you start thinking, uh, well, here's, here's what I want to do just like how you always did. And then you start thinking, well, um, what would be pleasing to God in this situation? So you'll find yourself uh, making, you know, like small, small decisions day by day that add up to over time, you know, we've become, uh, the goal is to become uh, molded into the image of Christ um, as like, we're all like little brothers of Jesus. He's the, the great big brother who shows us how to live um but you know christ is the perfect sacrifice and so you know we talk about lifestyles in the band i'd say the only guy who lives a healthy lifestyle in the band is probably mike our drummer he's out there in sunny california eating uh fruits and nuts and uh bark off of trees or whatever <laughs> whatever else he eats out there and he runs uh, 12 miles a day and riding the bike and doing all that healthy kind of stuff, you know, and the rest of us live where it's cold and gray and miserable and the sun doesn't shine for weeks on end. So, yeah, yeah. So me and Doran, we're just, you know, we're like, we're drowning our misery with another scoop of uh, triple fudge uh, brownie ice cream. Yeah, Mike looks like so, he's in shape big time. So, you know, so if, if I hope that that helps, a, that was a long answer, but I hope that that helps a little bit for people to understand, great. you know, what it's does it mean to be a Christian? It's, it's not about, it's not about your lifestyle that you're living now, or it's not about, well, you have to live a certain lifestyle in order to be Christian. No, just come to God as you are now, receive Christ, and then don't worry about it. Uh, just, but, but start studying the word, just read the scripture a little bit every day. And God will start to work on you and let him do it. Don't worry about it. It's like, and, and changes that happen in your life will be completely natural. And, and, uh, you know, he doesn't force anything on us. He just wants us to be in a relationship with him. And that's it. That's the bottom that's line. That's so good, Rex. That's, yeah, very, very and that good. Isn't, Mike, isn't, and that's why the thief on the cross, you know, he spent his whole life in a life of sin and turning away from God and making it, yeah. oh, I'm going to do it my way. I'm just going to do what I want to, I'm only thinking about me, 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 selfish, selfish, selfish. His whole entire life, he finds himself nailed to a cross. And even in that state, he's able to turn to Jesus and said, forgive me, Lord. And, and Jesus says, today you'll be with me in paradise. It's awesome. So, so it's not about, you know, like us making ourselves good enough to be, to become uh, a believer. You know, it's like, just believe. That's, that's where... Believe that's, and that's where the beginning, it, and then there's then there's growth from that. But just, but that's just that's the only step that's required, you know. Initially, just believe and receive. I mean, that's where you go. Wow, we have an amazing God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, some of us are just so, you know, uh, and then when, when I think about, you know, people in Ukraine, what they have to go through right now, and as we were saying off camera before we started that, you know, everybody in Ukraine knows somebody who's lost their life because of this tragedy that's going on right now. That's that's an incredible burden to bear. So we, we pray for the peace of God and the peace of Christ to take over and in Ukraine and that region of the world and certainly in Russia. And, and we pray for, uh, for, uh, Mr. Putin as well, that he will find the light of, of Christ and that, um, you know, he will submit his life to Christ and, and that they will make changes in their way of doing things as well so that we can all get along and, and live together on this big little old green ball that's floating around the sun. As Paul commands us to do, pray for leaders and authority. And meanwhile, there's rock and roll. <laughs> Yeah, Ukraine's Ukraine's getting to the point where it really does need divine intervention to hopefully Zelensky's at that point where he's not just like give me more muscles and more more bullets. Give he's gonna I don't even know if he's a Christian or not. I don't I don't think he is. But leaders in Ukraine need to understand that only God can save them from this onslaught or turn the heart yeah. of Putin. You know, it's it's a point to a point where not even America will be able to save, bail them out with the weapons. I'll tell you what I would like to see is I would like to see White Cross performing a concert in Ukraine celebrating freedom and and uh, the victory of the gospel and people submitting awesome. themselves to, uh, to Christ. I'd be down for that. For sure. I would love to have that concert. We have a venue. Ukraine. All right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sure. I, I would love I would love to see that happen in uh Thorn. Let's let's get to work on that. Well, and then uh, I heard Scotland mentioned and uh Switzerland and uh other uh, <laughs> other countries. I'd like to go over there and do uh do a tour through everywhere. Yeah. And just yeah. proclaiming the gospel and, and freedom of through Christ. Absolutely. All of these places. When you read the when you read the Bible, one of the few things that are commanded is actually to play a stringed instrument and put in or play the tar, play the drums. There's there's like lots of sounds where we're actually supposed to be musicians to worship God. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, Psalm one Psalm 150, right? Like it's there, yeah. <laughs> and and we certainly have done that. You boys sound like you're making a lot of noise over there. <laughs> I like, I'm I like sorry, the, boys, you're uh, just too loud. It's just a noise. I like White <laughs> Cross because they, they they're very deliberate with their riffs and their leads. A lot of for me, Christian music is too muddy. They have the every other instrument playing at the same time as distorted guitar and it gives me a bit of a headache but <laughs> white cross for me is easier to listen to and, and a lot some lot some of the songs you know um and i, and I just love like white, white cross's uh, message that they don't they don't compromise on the on the gospel you guys are hard hitting scriptures you know and and uh you don't mince your words and that's just so beautiful to see that 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 authenticity of boldness they off, they off, they off. You know, well, uh, we don't have time to to mess around. Yeah, you know, time is time is shifting through the the sands are sh are sifting through the hourglass, and uh, and we just we just need to get straight to the point. And uh, we're here to rock, and we're here to proclaim. The good news of peace with God through Christ, and that's it. And we haven't really got a lot of time for anything else. At least, at least for me, that's how I look at it for myself. We're reminded to uh, redeem the time for the days are evil. 
And uh, that should be our biggest goal is to provide, like you said, the freedom. Um, there's a very famous rock star that just made a speech in between songs about how he is working to provide freedom for people. And uh, I had a discussion with somebody that did an interview about that and uh, said that, yes, we have to make a pact. Actually, my grandson heard this and said, we need to make a pact to pray for this guy every day so that he finds the true source of freedom to provide to people. And uh, if, if you look at metal and the message that comes across in Christian metal, it's probably the most glorifying of the genres as far as glorifying Christ. Um, it, it's, a, it's a medium to proclaim the gospel to people everywhere because it's understood everywhere. And uh, that, uh, for me, I think is probably one of the main goals for White Cross is uh, reaching out with the gospel. You don't go to a White Cross show without getting the word. And uh, that's what that's the beauty of it. When in, in the White Thanks, Cross concerts, what per, what percentage of people are are non non Christians? Uh, I think we used to try to keep tabs on that. I just I just stopped worrying about that. It's like God is going to bring people there that He wants to be there, and and uh, um, everybody. You know, when we're having a concert, we realize that everybody in the room, including those guys uh, that are in the band, you know, all of us have issues and uh, we're all uh, trying to work through. Everybody has a problem that they're working through and we all of us need God's help in, in mm, our lives. Right. And we all, all of us need to grow closer to God. And some of us, uh, are at the point where we need to receive Christ for the first time. That's the first step. Then people that that haven't taken that step yet, but we want everyone to to come to that uh, saving knowledge of Christ. And some of the people are ready for that. Some of the people are not. Some of the people that have taken that step, but we still have issues that we're working through. So you know, your life doesn't just magically become uh, easy like a fairy tale. Just because we decided to become Christian, and just that we realize that God has given us eternal security through Christ, so at least we have that, you know. And then from there, we still have to work on all the, the various things in our lives that are going on. So we stopped. I, I don't think we're looking at things from a number as well. There was, you know, 29 people that uh, made decisions for Christ today. You know, it's like we don't try to keep... That's a that's a kind of a weird statistic if you think about it, but um, um, yeah, we don't we don't really do that. So <laughs> oh, it's good because and yet, I guess and yet we get... receive emails. You know, we'll get we'll get emails from time to time from people that say I accepted Christ at a White Cross concert back in such and such time. Yeah. So we know that we know that the gospel is going out, but it's not our job to count. You know, to keep score and to count how many how many heads how many people made decisions to follow Christ today so we don't we don't worry about that so what kind of reactions do you get from say atheists or just metal heads that that are used to really dark lyrics like singing about all sorts you know you can you know what it's like when they're hearing the gospel in the in these songs Well, somebody else answer your question. I'm talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think I've run in to any atheists as far as like you know if they were listening to White Cross. Um, but I mean, I've had I've had friends maybe that weren't. Christians listen to the band or Striper and you know they're like yeah you know I dig the music I'm not not too sure what's tap you know with this message thing or whatever um but yeah I, I haven't really come across it where it was like you know some atheists like arguing 
you know. But I think if you have, I mean, I think that's what's so amazing about music. It's such a great vehicle. And like my girlfriend, soon to be fiance, Kristen, she said something at some of the last shows that kind of like struck me. She said, you know, you guys have a platform. I don't. And she's like, so-and-so doesn't, but God, for some reason, has given you guys a platform and White Frost as well as others, you know, on worship leaders or whatever. But it just made me go, wow, you know, that's something to really think about, you know. And I don't know how I went off on that tangent. Anyway. No, that's good, though. That's, you know, it's humbling. Yeah. You know? Because this, this is a gift. Yeah. Sure. And like with, with music, you want, like, you know, the word says to play skillfully. And so you want to try and be your best so you can attract people that normally wouldn't, you know, come to church or, you know, maybe they can be like, wow, man, I kind of dig this music. And then, like, you know, Rex was saying earlier, then God can do his thing. Mm -hmm. On the subject of comments, I read a comment on uh, YouTube the other day that said something to the, the essence of the comment was, I'm an atheist, but I really dig this band. Yeah. So it's kind of like if they start listening to it, um, there may have been some expletives involved in the comment, but uh, the main thing was the band got their attention. Yeah. And in getting the attention, then that comes to what Mike just said about the platform. So you have a platform, you have music that got the attention, and now the music is bringing across the message of Jesus Christ and the grace that saves us and all that he did that is that to me that's beautiful and i see them a lot i i monitor comments all the time believe me there are some that i literally take down because they're really bad but uh you know when somebody says that when somebody says i don't believe this uh, i don't believe the same way or whatever but the music really gets me it really hits me that that to me where some people some people plant sow seeds some water, some cultivate, and then somebody reaps the harvest. Um, I not too long ago I had somebody get in touch through a comment on on YouTube saying, "I was at that show. I got saved that night." Now, forty years ago, yeah, you you have no idea who was touched. You have no idea who was touched, and that draws into what Rex said. You you just do what God has told you to do. You present the gospel on that, and somewhere down the line somebody might come up to you and say i got saved that night and, and they may never say that until you get to heaven and then they might come up and say i got saved at your concert a millennia ago but anyway that's uh that's my feelings on the subject no that's yeah, so that's... true dorm I, I had a an amazing experience super very humbling you know because i'm a lot of times i'm thinking why'd you use me god because you know yeah. You always see your own faults and and uh i had a guy when i i joined in 91 so the show was probably like 93 or something and uh this guy contacts me like 10 years later and he said hey i'm so and so i know you don't know who i am i was at a concert um of white cross so and so and I met you afterwards. I asked you for some sticks, but you didn't have any. And you had broke a symbol that night and you gave me the broken symbol. And I was like, oh my gosh, I do. I remember that. And he said, I was uh, at a really bad place in my relationship with God at that time. And I just, he goes, I was uh, just touched, you know, that you gave me that broken symbol. And he said, I decided to, to, really start fixing my relationship with god and he goes long story short i'm a youth pastor i've been a youth pastor for like seven years now and i was like 
super emotional because it just Praise made me go, oh my God, look how God yeah. used a thing like me, you know, to, to and, bring and Mike. We love that uh, story. We love that story, but that is not an excuse for you to keep on breaking symbols. I've been <laughs> telling you over and over, stop breaking symbols. We just can't afford it anymore. Right. Okay. We're we're very happy for the story, but you know, you gotta stop breaking symbols all the time. Yeah. It's not very <laughs> No, but that's an awesome that's an awesome story. That that's... Yeah, it is. It's a great story. That's that's what says it's worth it all. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's beautiful. Okay, guys. Well, um, I won't take any more of your time, but uh, I'll just uh pray for you quickly, and um, I'd love to have you on again, and I'll I'll try and get you on bigger podcasts. I'll recommend you guys. Um. So yeah, Lord Jesus, I pray for 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 White Cross. I pray for every member of this band, and I pray, Lord, that you would use them throughout the earth mightily with the music, and you would give each of them fresh music, fresh ideas, and that you would anoint them to go into your presence and lead others, Christians and unbelievers alike, to glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Nikos. Appreciate that, man. It's been uh, an honor to be on your podcast. Thank you, sir. Stay yes. in touch. Stay in touch. Will do. Yes. Yeah, I'm line up that in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> Blessings do it on your journey, Nikos. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Yep. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.